Continuing our discussion of exponents, uh, let's think about what we have so far. We have defined base 2 any integer exponent. And we already know that when we work with numbers, we have integers, we have rational numbers. So one question is, how about exponent of a rational number? Does that make sense? Well, unless we play with it, we're not going to know. So let's start playing with it. So we're going to worry about rational exponents. So recall that if I wrote 2 to the fifth, that means 2 times 2 times 2, 5 times, right? So rational number, can you think of a rational number? Well, 5 is a rational number. But what if I said, can you make sense of 32 to the power 1 fifth? Remember what fractions mean to you. 1 fifth, that means 1 part out of 5. So use your knowledge of fractions and be a mathematician right now. You know, in mathematics, doing research is doing what we're doing right now. You play with it. You say, OK, I know what 2 to the fifth means. Do you think I can make sense of 32 to the 1 fifth? And you say, OK, 32 to the 1 fifth is, and then come up with your answer. And if it is consistent with all the other things we've done, then we're good to go. So that's how mathematicians do research. At a higher level, this is exactly what you're doing right now. So no matter what your answer is, do spend time and give us an answer. All right. Let's see what we can do here. We know that 32 is 2 to the fifth. And so 2 to the fifth to the exponent of 1 fifth. We already know that if you had 2 to the fifth to the second, we multiplied these. So if you do that now, what do you think will happen? We'll end up with 2. And that would make sense because 32 to the power 1 fifth, 2 to the fifth, when you take a power of 5, you take this many, you take 5 twos. You take this many twos. So now we want to know I want a fifth many of 32s. But 32 has is made up of 5 twos. So a fifth, there are 5 twos here, right? A fifth of them would be just 1 2. All right, so that was our motivation for how to work with fractional powers. But the real motivation comes from uh, something geometric. So remember how we talked about area of a square is length times width. A times A would give me A squared, right? So area is A squared units, and the length is A. When the length is A and you have a cube, then the volume is A times A times A or A cubed. Here's an example of exponents being used practically, right? So now, what if you want the opposite? What if you know the area, and you know the volume, and you want to know what the length of the square or the cube is? So a to the power 1 half units, when a is a positive real number, can be looked at as length of the side of a square of a square units area. v to the power 1 third where v is a positive real number can be looked at looked upon as what length of a side of a cube whose volume is v cubic units so there's your motivation for how we can make sense of um, fractional powers all right so let's take an example if the area of a square is 9 what do you think is the length of each side well here's my square well, to get the length, first I need to know what that 9 is made up of. If it's a square, then I'm going to have to make a square grid. And I get uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So this is my 9 squared centimeter. Each square here is a square centimeter. And there are 9 of them, 3 times 3. So the length of the side would be what? 3 centimeters. All right, let's do another example. Let's say I have a cube. That's 8 cubic centimeters. What do you think we should do? Well, we're going to have to fill that with 1 cubic centimeters and see how many fit. So we have 4 on the bottom and 4 on the top. That's 8 cubic centimeters. So what do you think is the side? Then that's 1, that's 2. That's 2 centimeters. All right. So we are defining that for any counting number n and a real number a, and we are looking at non-negative real numbers. Then a to the power 1 over n 
is a real number that, when multiplied by itself n times, results in the number a. You might be like, huh? <laughs> what? So if you feel like that, it's important to just look at an example. And we'll do that in a little bit. So for example, 32 to the power 1 fifth. We're saying 32 to the power 1 fifth is that number, so that when you take that number and multiply it by itself five times, you get 32. And we already saw that that number was 2, because 2 times 2 times uh, 2 five times gives you 32. So 32 to the power 1 fifth is defined as 2. So a is 32. So now note, if you have a to the power numerator, denominator, numerator is m, denominator is n, then that is saying that it's a to the power 1 over n multiplied by itself m times. So it would look like this. OK? You can also think of it as a to power m raised to power 1 over n. Either one of them interpretations are fine. All right, let's take a look at an example then. So a to the power 7 thirds, what's that? That's the same as saying a to the power 2 and 1 third. So if you have an improper fraction, you can write that as a mixed fraction. You already know what a square means. So you have a squared times a to the 1 third. So we can always write rational exponents in such a way that the numerator is always smaller than the denominator. And you have to use uh, mixed fractions for that. All right, let's do that. So we already saw 32 is 2 to the fifth. So 2 to the 5 fourths is 2 and 1 and 1 fourth. This is going to help you later immensely. So make sure you know how to change uh, base to an exponent that is improper fraction into a mixed fraction and rewrite it. Rewrite it so that you have um, base to a whole power and base to a proper fraction exponent. And then, of course, if you have a number, then 2 squared, we already know, is 4. So I can rewrite that as 4 times 2 to the half power. And when you have a number, 2 squared, then you can evaluate it as 2 squared is 2 times 2, or 4. So you can rewrite it like this. So you have the whole part here, and then you have a base to a fractional exponent, which is a proper fraction. Do this homework. Continuing our discussion of exponents, we are going to introduce to you a new symbol representing fractional powers. And that's called radicals. So an nth root or a radical, which is written with a little n and a little square root symbol like this, with the n goes in here, and a like that, is defined in terms of fractional exponents as uh, nth root of a is a to the power of 1 over n. So look, this denominator of n in the exponent is this number n here. So nth root is defined as a to the power of 1 over n. So that means that nth root of a is a number that, when raised to the nth power, gives you the answer of a. That's what the nth root represents. One note we would like to make is that if this n is 2, then we leave the 2 out. But if it's 3, 4, 5, any other counting number, then we put it there. So when you have square root, the, n, the 2 is left out. So for example, if I wanted square root 25, you're looking for something squared giving you 25, and that would be 5. Cube root 64 is going to be 4 because 4 cubed is 64. So it would pay you uh, great dividends if you remember some basic squares and cubes, like 1 squared is 1, 1 cubed is 1. 2 squared is 4, 2 cubed is 8. 3 squared is 9, 3 cubed is 27. 4 squared is 16, 4 cubed is 64, and so on. Negative 8. We know that negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2 is negative 8. So you end up with negative 2. So cube root of negative 8 is negative 2. So that's how you read it. Square root of 25, cube root of 64, 
cube root of negative 8. Make sure you know how to read it. Now, square root of negative 4 is what? Well, negative 4. Anytime you have a negative inside a square root, it's going to turn into an i. Why? Because we already defined in complex numbers that square root of negative 1 is i for imaginary. And so square root 4 is 2. So square root negative 4 is defined as 2i. And why? Because when you square it, 2 squared is 4, and i squared is negative 1, because i is defined as square root of negative 1. All right, so in the notation nth root of a, a is called the radicand, n is called index. So this a that sits on the inside of that symbol is called radicand. This is called the index. Again, just like we made sure you understood base and exponents, you want to make sure you can identify radicands and index. So that symbol is called a radical. When the index is 2, we call it square root and leave the 2 out and use just the radical notation. When the index is n, we say nth root. So that would be cube root here. Can you see? So that would be cube root. This would be fifth root and so on. All right, so go ahead and uh, give us the radicand index and how to read it, how you would read it out loud. Write it in words here, please. So 25 is the radicand. When there is no number here, that means index is 2. And you would read that as square root of 25. So go ahead and do that for all of them. Pause the video here, do the problems, and then check. See if you got them all. If you got them all correct, then that's great. Now, if you notice, we threw in 1 over fifth root of 7. And this negative, does it have anything to do with the exponent? Remember, nope. The negative is going to follow through if you were to evaluate it. 7 is the radicand. 5 is the root. So you have negative 1 over fifth root of 7. That's how you would read this. Fourth root of 3 minus 4a, 7th root of x cubed. All right, so now that you understand the notation, let's do some examples. So here we're going to give you problems, and we're asking you to simplify using the definition of what a radical is and what a fractional exponent is. All right, so let's start with this. Do you remember what we said, 5th root of a to the 5 power? That's how you would read that. And so that means it's a to the 5, and we are raising it to the 1 -fifth power. And so remember, when you raise something to a power, you multiply the exponents. Do you remember that? Or the definition is that you're taking a fifth power of a to the 5, which will give you a to power 1. So again, look at this. When the index matches the exponent, you have numerator, denominator are the same number, so you're going to end up with a to power 1 or a. OK, what if you have fifth root of 32? Well, we would have to factor 32 first and make it look like a power of something. Can you think of a number that goes into 32? How about 2? 2 times 16, and then what? 16 is 4 times 4, and 4 is 2 times 2. 32 is 2 to the fifth. So just like a to the fifth, we now instead have 2 to the fifth. So we will end up with 2 to the power 5 over 5, or 2. How about that? Pause the video here and do that on your own. If you're stuck, not to fret, just take a few breaths and just factor 8, like we did 32. All right, so we have here cube root of 2 to the third. So again, now the index is 3, and the exponent for the base 2 is 3, so it'll be 3 over 3, or 2 to the power 1. 
So again, 8 times 2 is 16. So 2 to the 4th power, 4 over 4 is 2 to the power 1. So that will give you 2. All right, now we have cube root, and it's 8 to power 6. So again, remember, this would be 8 to the power 6, and the whole thing raised to 1 third power. So 1 third of 6, which would be 2. So a squared. So a to the power 6 thirds, which is a to power 2. All right, pause the video here. See what you can do. So 15 fifths, which will give you a to the third. So a to the power 15 fifths, which will give you a to the third. All right, let's try a few more. Now you might say to yourself, wait a minute. So far, we've all done index of single base two exponents. We have two things happening here. Remember, when there's no sign in the middle here, it's a multiplication sign. So 8 is 2 to the third. So let's write that. Cube root of 2 to the third, we've already done here, which is 2. Cube root of a to the sixth, we've done right here, which is 6 thirds, or a squared. And so it makes sense that cube root of 8 is 2. Cube root of a to the sixth is a squared. So the answer here is 2a to the second. Remember, when you have a base times another base, and then you have the whole thing to a power, you can take the power of each one separately. And that's what's happening here. All right, let's try this one on your own. Go ahead, pause the video. Don't say I don't know. It is OK to not know, but just try anything. And then in a few seconds, you know, you'll see the answer anyway. So if you are not attempting on your own, it is not going to teach you what we need you to learn. So pause the video truly and give it a shot. And don't get thrown by how something looks. Remember, looks are deceptive. Same thing with people. Just because how somebody looks does not mean they are good or bad people. You need to give them some time to understand and get to know and do the same thing with these problems here. We do have a fraction, 1 over something. So it's going to be 1 over something. 16, 4th root of 16 is 2. 4th root of a to the 12. 12 over 4 is 3, so a to the 3rd. The same thing that we did here, right? All right, try this. Wait a minute, what happens here? Well, we have 4a to power 1 half. And we have 4a to power 1 half. So let's just write it like that and see what you can make of it. We will give you a few moments. See what you think this answer should be. Take a shot at it. Remember, you have not seen this before. But just using your previous knowledge, see what you can do. Aha! How come we got 4a? Because we have the same base, 4a, they're both raised to a power. So we're going to add 1 half plus 1 half, which will give you 1. So 4a to power 1 is 4a. Do you see that? You can also think of square root of something, square root of something. They're all positive. When it's all positive, we can multiply out. So 4 times 4 is 16. Square root of 16 is 4. A times a is a squared. Square root of a squared is a. That's another way you can think of it. But this is a way you've seen it before, where you have a base to a power, base to a power. Same base, so you add the exponents, and you end up with that answer. In case you forgot, 32 was 2 times 16, or 2 to the fifth. Does that make sense to you? So 2 to the fifth, a to the fifth, raised to the 1 fifth power, because you're taking fifth root. And that's how you see that. And so what do you think the final answer is? Good, 2a. Well, if you actually look, 32a to the fifth is the same as there. And you already did that, didn't you? So that means this should not be too hard for you because you've already done components of it. 
So go ahead and try it on your own. Pause the video, give it a shot. All right, 32, 2 to the 5th, A to the 5th, B to the 10. So 5th root of 32 is 2, 5th root of A to the 5th is A, and B to the 10. So 10 fifths, which will give you B squared. Again, two different cube roots, so evaluate it. Cube root of 8 is 2, cube root of B to the 15, 15 thirds, which will give you 5. So 2, which is a cube root of 8, and B to the 5, which is the cube root of B to the 15, because it's really 1 third power, or 15 thirds, which is 5. And now we're just putting these together in a different form. We have a cube root of 8 times b to the 15th, as opposed to cube root 8 times cube root b to the 15th. And again, same principles apply, and so you get 2b to the 5th. You can see how these two quantities are identical. All right, so now we're going to go backwards. The reason for these exercise sets is so to make sure that you truly understand what radicals do and how to work backwards and not just evaluate the radicals. Another way we could have asked you this question is create a problem for which we give you the answer and then you make the radical. So the reason to create something is when you can create a problem, that means you truly understand the nature of what you're working with. So imagine we gave you a quantity here, fourth root of something, and we told you that the answer is A. Could you tell us what goes into the radicand? So pause the video, think about how in the world you're going to get what the original problem was if I give you the answer. So the nature of fourth root means what? To the fourth power, one fourth power. So something raised to one fourth power gives you a to power one. a to power one can be written as four over four because a fourth of four is one. Does that give you a hint as to what should go inside here? Remember the denominator is the index. So that means the inside quantity must be a to the fourth power. All right, let's try a few more. In order for you to get a 3, how many 3 should have been inside here? Remember, you need 4 A's to escape the radical and give you just an A because 4 fourths. So 3 to the 4 fourths, so that'll be 3 to the 4. And what is 3 to the 4? 3 times 3 is 9. 9 times 3, 27. 27 times 3, 81. So again, make sure you understand what this 81, where it came from. Negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2 is negative 8. And so if I put negative 8 here, I will get 3 negative 2's multiplied together gives you negative 8. So essentially, this is the same as saying in parentheses, negative 2 to the power of 3 thirds. That's why I have negative 8. I could have also seen that as negative of 2, in which case I would say negative of cube root of 8 because cube root of 8 is 2. So you can see when you have odd powers, the radical negative essentially is the same as saying it's negative of cube root of 8. All right, how about this? Now I'm not giving you the index or the radicand, and I'm telling you, but the answer needs to be a squared. What do you think we should make the problem so that the answer is a squared? So you have infinitely many choices here because you can make the index whatever you choose, and then that will dictate whatever your radicand is. If you pick the radicand first, then you have infinitely many choices for that as well, except for the base part. The base has to be A. So radicand, if you fix that, then the index will be fixed. So let's say that I pick the index to be 4. Okay, Then fourth root of something is giving me A squared. Remember, 
a fourth of something is 2, which means that something, that exponent of a needs to be 8. 8 fourths is 2. So how about you pause the video here and give us two other possible answers, and then we'll do a little more on the same problem. So go ahead and see. You can use my answer now since I gave you that one. All right, so here I have another possibility would be what? I'm saying fifth root. If I pick my index to be fifth root, then inside fifth of something is 2 power, right? So a to the 10, because 10 fifths is a to the second. a to the power 10 fifths will give me a to the second. How about this one? If I say square root, I don't have to write the index of 2. Remember that notation? So square root means the index is 2. So 4 halves is 2. Go ahead, pause the video and try it on your own, please. a to the 10 is good because 10 fifths is 2. So a squared is going to come only if you had a to the 10th to begin with. Here's another one now. Index and the radicand are missing. So figure out, remember, infinitely many possible choices you got. So you have to pick something here, and then you'll get a different answer. So if I pick fifth, what do you think we should put for the radicand? Yes, a to the 15th. a to the 15th power, because 15 fifths is 3. Here, I'm giving you the index, so now you only have one possible answer. In order to get a 2, cube root of 8 is 2. And in order to get a to the 5th, what do you think we should start with? So something over 3 giving you 5. So that must be 15, because 15 thirds is 5. All right. Ooh, look what happened here. Here on the left-hand side, you do not have 1 over. But on the right-hand side, you have a 1 over. 1 over means negative exponent. So first of all, let's just look at the 5. We already saw that in order to get a 5, we have to have a 15. But to get a 1 over 5, a to the fifth, we need to start with negative 15. So a to the negative 15th power, cube root of it, will give you a to the negative 5 power, which is 1 over a to the fifth. Last one. The answer is nope, not possible, because why? Because remember, square root of a positive real number, which is what all the variables they said were positive real numbers. And that means that the square root of a positive real number is never going to give you a negative answer. So square root of a positive real number is never negative. So this is a no solution. What we're trying to teach you here is that just because somebody asks you a question, does not mean that it is always going to have an answer. You have to be prepared to think and be confident in your abilities and logic and say, nope, not possible. This is a problem that cannot be solved for this reason. That's what we're trying to teach you here.